grief is soul wrenching. Um, it takes every part of your body and just makes you feel <laughs> makes you feel horrible. It just wonders how you can even wake up the next day. It takes you places that you didn't know that you could go. Um, I remember one night, I'm not a drinker in the least tiny bit, but I could not sleep. And I just remember one night thinking, well, maybe if I have a glass of, what was it, amaretto or something, I could be able to, oh. <laughs> and I realized, nah, this isn't for me. It can take you places that you don't realize can be dangerous for you. Not that that was dangerous, but I just could not sleep. And um, I just needed something. And that's the way it is at the beginning. Um, it just takes over your life, every aspect of your life. But as time goes by, uh, you just don't do it as often. And you do have to make a choice somewhere down the road where you have to be able to shut this off and to be able to move forward. Because if you let the overpowering of grief, especially at the beginning, take over your life later, uh, you're going to have a very hard time being able to, to move on. So there just, at least for myself, there came a time where when I went back to work, especially where um, I used to cry going in the car going down. And then as soon as I walked in those doors, I clicked something in my brain. I worked with children, so I had to click something in my brain and was able to go through the day and to do what I needed to do. And then to be honest with you, enjoy my time with the kids. Um, the kids helped me an awful lot heck of a lot more than adults. And at the end of the day, when I got back into my car, the switch would go again, and I would usually cry going home. But eight hours of that day, it wasn't totally consumed. And as that time went on, the crying and everything else started to get less. And then you kind of realize that, yeah, you can do this thing. You can live this life. There is something here for you, even though Lisa's not here.